Well, hello, everyone. Thank you for joining me tonight for Welcome for uh, Essential Oils of the Bible. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Holly Agnew. I'm an eating psychology coach, essential oil educator, doTERRA wellness advocate, and owner of Holly's Holistic Health. And before we get started, I need to make a disclaimer. I am not a nurse or a doctor, and the statements made in this class have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administrations, and the products mentioned here are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I'm also not a Bible scholar, so please bear with me on that. I, I know some things about the Bible, but I am definitely not um, one that can answer a lot of questions about it. So first, let me tell you a little bit about me. Um, I was introduced to essential oils in 2012 when I had my first grandson, and he had a skin issue that um, the doctors uh, wanted to use some uh, medicines on that I didn't like. So I was looking for alternative uh, solutions. A friend of mine introduced me to essential oils. She gave me some lavender, said here, put this on a spot a few times a day with some coconut oil, see what happens. So I did. And uh, those spots were gone in a couple of days, which was pretty amazing to me because I was always um, all about the medications. So uh, essential oils have been used throughout recorded history for a wide variety of wellness applications. The Egyptians were some of the first people to use aromatic essential oils extensively in medical practice, beauty treatment, food preparation, and religious ceremony. Frankincense, sandalwood, myrrh, and cinnamon were considered va very valuable cargo along caravan trade caravan trade routes and were sometimes exchanged for gold. Learning from the Egyptians, the, Egypt, the Greeks used essential oils in their practices of therapeutic massage and aromatherapy. The Romans also used aromatic oils to promote health and personal hygiene. Influenced by the Greeks and Romans, as well as Chinese and Indian Ayurvedic use of aromatic herbs, the Persians began to re refine distillation me methods for extracting essential oils from aromatic plants. Essential oil extracts were used throughout the Dark Ages in Europe for their antibacterial and fragrant properties. So what is an essential oil? <laughs> See, my, my slides didn't transfer correctly. Um, they are natural aromatic compounds found in plants. They are steam distilled or cold press extracted, and they're, they are powerful and safe without side effects, but with side benefits. And by that, I mean, um, sometimes you're using essential oil for one thing and something else disappears, which is pretty cool. So one, the first way that it can be used is topically. You can apply it directly to the skin for systemic or localized effects. Um, it can be applied to the bottom of your feet where a lot of blood vessels are, and you don't have to worry as much about um, sensitivity there. It can be applied directly to wherever is um, bothering you. Uh, some oils we do recommend that you use with carrier oils if you're using them for uh, younger or younger kids or older populations, we suggest that you use a carrier oil all the time. Um, also topically, you wanna to be careful if you're using citrus oils because they can make you sensitive to the sun, they can cause you to burn easier. So you don't want to um, put them on uh, and then go out in the sun. You wanna wait at least 12 hours. And even then you wanna uh, test your skin because um, not everybody's skin is the same and some people are more sensitive than others. You can also use oils aromatically. You can diffuse them in a room to impact your mood, to open the airways, and to cleanse the environment. Um, they're also great when you want to change somebody's mood. If they're, if you have kids who don't like to get up in the morning, it's great to diffuse certain essential oils to help improve their mood, especially if you get ones that get up on the wrong side of the bed all the time. They're also great if you have somebody who has breathing problems like snoring, um, or congestion or that kind of thing to help open up the airways. They can also be used internally. You can put them in a veggie cap and 
take them that way. You can put them under your tongue. You can put them in a glass of water or juice or in a teaspoon with honey. Um, just remember when you take them internally that uh, you want to be careful with the hot oils, which are ones like oregano, cinnamon, thyme, uh, clove. They they are hot like a hot pepper, so they they're kind of, they're kind of spicy because they are spices, um, and they um, can feel hot when they touch your skin, just like a hot pepper does. It kind of it heats your skin up. The same thing with the essential oils. So you want always want to use a carrier oil with the hot oils. Essential oils are safe and effective. Let me see if I can move this thing here is in the way. Oops. Go back. Sorry about that. Try and get my thing out of the way here so you guys can see instead of looking at there we go. Maybe that will get it out of the way. There we go. So essential oils are safe and effective and they are affordable. They're um 100% natural and safe. They are extracts from plants. They are steam distilled or cold press extracted from the plants. They are effective. They're more effective than modern approaches to health problems because they are able to permeate the cell membrane. And most of the medicines, actually none of the medicines on the market today are able to do that. Um, they are also affordable, more affordable than traditional medical care because they only cost a penny, pennies per drop. So in our large bottles, there are 250 drops in there. And if you divide the cost by the number of drops in the bottle, it's a really reasonable cost. Plus one oil can be used for many, many, many different things. Whereas when you get um, certain medicines, they are only good for uh, one, maybe two different problems that you might have. So what makes doTERRA different? Um, doTERRA has certified pure therapeutic grade essential oils, which means there are no fillers, artificial ingredients, contaminants, or other toxic chemical residues. Many brands claim to be 100% pure, but few are subjected to the rigorous testing standards for chemical composition, purity, and potency. doTERRA works closely with chemists and growers to select botanicals of the correct species, grown in ideal climates, and carefully harvested at the right time. doTERRA offers the safest and purest essential oils available on the market today. And doTERRA is making a difference with their co-impact sourcing with more than 140 oils in its product line. doTERRA sources its oils from over 45 countries, more than half of which could be considered developing countries. To ensure that small-scale buyers or excuse me, small scale farmers and harvesters in disadvantaged areas are treated ethically, doTERRA has introduced an initiative called co-impact sourcing. And this and the next thing I'm going to talk about are two of the main things that drew me to doTERRA. Uh, co-impact sourcing creates shared value for all stakeholders in the supply chain by being at the source and intentionally implementing environmental stewardship and, and or other social impact initiatives. Co-impact sourcing seeks to develop long-term, mutually beneficial supplier partnerships while creating sustainable jobs and providing reliable income in underdeveloped areas. doTERRA is committed to the ethical treatment of its suppliers by providing on-time payments at fair prices. Growers and harvesters are encouraged to form cooperative groups to share collective benefits and bargaining power while improving skills and capacity. Additionally, the doTERRA Healing Hands Foundation helps support development projects and sourcing communities. Projects include schools, health clinics, improved infrastructure, and clean water systems. The doTERRA Healing Hands Foundation empowers people worldwide to be healthy, safe, and self-reliant. Some of the initiatives they have in place include anti-human trafficking, disaster relief, clean water and sanitation, global health, empowering women, and supporting children. 100% of the do donations go to organizations that help others, such as o Operation Underground Railroad and Days for Girls. 
So let's get into how the Bible, um, how the oils are mentioned in the Bible. In the first chapter of Genesis, it is written that God placed mankind in the Garden of Eden. God knew from the very beginning that this perfect environment would be the key source for mankind's healing and health. Daily applications of essential oils in biblical times were extensive indeed. 36 of the 39 books of the Old Testament and 10 of the 27 books of the New Testament mention essential oils or, or the plants that produce them. These were the medicine provided by God. The early Christians held the aromatic oils in very high esteem. Paul chose to compare devout Christians as sweet savors, fragrances, or aromas, spreading the gospel among the perishing. In Ephesians 2, he admonishes his fellow Christians to be imitators of Christ, who gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. God provided these plants and oils to heal our, heal our bodies, minds, and spirits. They were the source, original source of healing, and that connection is still available to us today. The healing oils, or essential oils as they're known today, are the aromatic, volatile, distilled liquids of certain plants known and esteemed for their therapeutic qualities. They are referenced in both biblical and ancient secular history and are generally regarded as being man's first known medicine. The therapeutic biochemicals within essential oils are among the most potent healing substances known to man. They're antiviral, antibacterial, antifungal, anti-infectious, anti-inflammatory, antiseptic, antimicrobial, anti-neuralgic, anti-rheumatic. Immune-stimulating properties are without equal in the world of medicine and healing. Pathogenic microorganisms like bacteria and viruses do not become resistant to essential oils as they do modern-day synthetic antibiotic drugs. And unlike Many of today's most popular antiseptic chemicals, essential oils, do not harm human tissue. There are numerous references to essential oils or the plants they are derived from in the Bible. Some precious oils such as frankincense, myrrh, galbanum, rosemary, hyssop, cassia, cinnamon, and spikenard were used for anointing and healing of the sick. The three wise men, or magi, brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh to the Christ child. Clinical research shows that frankincense and myrrh are two of the most powerful immune-stimulating substances available, containing very high amounts of Im immune-stimulating properties. Perhaps the free, three wise men were wise in many ways beyond our knowledge. Frankincense is steam distilled from resin. It's a generational tree that takes 40 years to produce its first resin. One of the gifts of the wise men to our, our savior, frankincense, would have been rubbed all over the body of the baby. It promotes skin cellular health and builds a healthy immune system. The Bible mentions frankincense is used as part of a holy ritual as an, as an incense. People claimed frankincense had more worth than gold. It was used as a natural healer and an aid to heal almost any disease that plagued people during that time. Egyptian tradition says that frankincense is good for everything from gout to a broken head, or in other words, good from head to toe. If in doubt, use frankincense. Other names for frankincense are, are olibanum or oil from Lebanon. Some historical uses for frankincense include it was used for wounds to stop infections. It was placed on an insect bite to re help reduce swelling and speed healing. It was used to improve concentration. Spiritual oil that enhanced and promoted emotional and spiritual feeling. It was diffused to elevate the mood, often applied onto each foot at night to help with sore feet. It was rubbed on shoulders, stomach, and bottoms of the feet to help with low mood, induce insomnia. Egyptians used it to the abdomen to help remove stretch marks. And a key ingredient in the holy 
anointing oils and the oil that stopped biblical plagues. Next is myrrh. Myrrh is steam distilled from the gum and resin and grown in Somalia. It has one of the highest levels of sesquiterpenes, a class of compounds that has direct effects on the hypothalamus, pituitary, and amygdala, which is the seat of our emotions. Not only was myrrh used as a gift to the baby Jesus, myrrh is known as a highly valued and desired oil. One of the key ingredients in Moses' holy anointing oil, myrrh was highly regarded by biblical figures such as David and Solomon. Some historical uses for myrrh um, include religious rituals, embalming. Um, it was used to help soften skin. It was in, burned as incense during childbirth. It uh, was applied on umbilical cords to prevent infection, and it was applied to wounds to promote healing and prevent infection. And it was also um, used to enhance prayer, meditation, and spiritual practices. Next is sandalwood. Sandalwood is steam distilled from wood. It takes between 40 to 60 years to mature and be available for harvest. Referred to as aloes in the body, um, and this is not to be confused with aloe vera, which is an American plant. It is believed to be obtained from fragrant scent sandalwood. Uh, aloes were a gift from Nicodemus um, to Jesus. Some historical uses of sandalwood include it helps to enhance deep sleep. You can rub it on the eyebrows and wide circles around the eye one to three times daily to help with vision. It can be used as a cologne. It can com be combined with bath salts for a relaxing bath. It was used for dry chapped skin and wrinkled skin for, for digestive upset. Um, it was massaged in hair and on the scalp to retard graying. It was used to speed wound healing and it was inhaled to enhance greater self-awareness. Cypress um, is steam distilled from seeds. The oil of cypress has been used since ancient times for purification and as incense. This oil is extracted from the cypress tree, which has wood so durable that the cypress doors of Rome's St. Peter's Basilica show no sign of decay even after 1,200 years. Some historical uses for cypress include um, helping with cuts and, and scars. Um, it's used for relieving pain. It was used to facilitate healing and prevent infection. Uh, it was used around the nasal area to help control a nosebleed. It was used to enhance immune function, applied as an insect repellent, used to help relieve acute chest discomfort, used aromatically to create an ambience of security and grounding, and it was applied topically for its benefits for skin, hair, and scalp. Cassia um, is steam distilled from the bark. Cassia was an ingredient in the holy anointing oil given to Moses. This exotic fragrance of cinnamon and vanilla might be similar in its aroma to cinnamon, but it is physically and chemically much different. Care must be taken in topical use as it may cause skin sensations. It is antibacterial, antifungal, anti-inflammatory, antiviral, and an anticoagulant um, with its properties. Some historical uses of cassia include, it was used as a key ingredient in the incense used in temple worship. It was rubbed through the hair. Um, perfumed hair was used because they did not wash their hair frequently. It, it was used for joyful, uplifting feelings as a mouthwash and cooking. And it was mixed with olive oil to help with boils, ringworm, and fungal infections. Cedarwood is steam distilled from the bark also. It's produced mainly in Morocco. It 
is a species most closely related to the cedars of Lebanon. Of all essential oils, cedarwood is the highest in sesquiterpenes, which are oxygen delivering molecules capable of crossing the blood brain barrier. Its durable wood was used to build Solomon's temple and symbolizes strength and protection. Historical uses of cedar wood include being used to enhance prayer and meditation. It can be, it was inhaled and breathed in deeply to help with mental clarity. It was used as an insect repellent. Egyptians used it on the scalp to inhibit hair loss. Um, it was rubbed on wounded skin to help clean, disinfect, and protect from infection. It was rubbed on the chest area to help relieve symptoms of difficult breathing, and it was applied to help sleep. Next is spikenard or lavender. Um, it's mentioned often in the Bible, not by the name lavender, but rather by the name used at that time, which was spikenard, from the Greek name for lavender, nardus, or after the city of Narda. And the Gospel of Luke, the writer reports, then then Mary took a pound of an ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. As an herb, lavender has been documented has been in documented use for over 2,500 years. In ancient times, lavender was used for mummification and perfume by the Egyptians, Phoenicians, and peoples of Arabia. Romans used lavender oils for bathing, cooking, and scenting the air, and they most likely gave it the Latin root from which they derive the modern name, either lavar to wash, or lavendula, livid or bluish. The flowers' soothing tonic qualities, the insect repellent effects of the strong scent, and the use of the dried plant and smoking mixtures also added to the value of the herb in ancient times. Some historical uses for um, spikenard including, include being known as a skin tonic for rough or wrinkled skin. The aromatic scent was known for its soothing effect. It was rubbed on the stomach to help with digestive problems. It was applied as perfume, applied to the feet and the crown of, of the head to help ground and balance the mind and stimulate feelings of courage and power, and used on wounds and cuts to help disinfect and speed healing. So by now you're probably thinking, how can I get some of these gifts of the earth? Um, one of the ways you can get it, and the best way to get it is with uh, one of our kits. So this kit is our small bottle kit. It comes with our top 10 oils. And some of the oils that we talked about in it are frankincense, lavender, um, and uh, oregano. Well, we didn't talk about oregano, but that's been around a while too. And then our big bottle kit has the same oils, it's just, it just comes in bigger bottles, and it is um, it saves you $122.50. Um, would you like to learn more about what we do as wellness advocates or um, host your own class? Uh, would you like to earn some extra income? These are some things that you might want to think about um, because we do like to do classes and we'd like to help other people get these oils in their lives because we know what kind of healing properties they have and how much they've helped us. So if you are one of those people, um, please talk to the person who invited you here and we will be ha happy to help you um, on your journey. So again, I am Holly Agnew. This is my email, holly at hollysholistichealth.net. So if you have any questions, um, let me know if you're watching this on replay. Um, if you are watching this now, I'm going to open, I'm going to stop the recording and I'm going to open it up for questions.